plenty of heat and plenty of wind to go around as we go through the rest of your Monday across Kelvin land. Temperatures climbing well into the 90s, even toward the line of the century mark along the Missouri River Valley. So please keep this in mind if you are going to be outside today. It's going to be dangerously hot in a couple of areas. And we don't get much relief tonight throughout much of Kelvin land. We're in the upper 60s to low 70s for overnight lows at best around 60 toward Rapid City. We'll talk about the rest of your seven-day forecast, which does get a bit unsettled at times, coming up as we go through the hour. But until then, a midday in Kelvin Land starts right now. Live from Kelvin Land Media Group, midday in Kelvin Land. Houston Speedway and Brandon is preparing for a huge week of racing. Plus... A high-stakes meeting between the U.S. and China to ease tensions. I'm Natalie Brand. Why the Secretary of State says there's a lot more work to do. Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. New this midday, Dakota State University hosted a signing ceremony this morning as the Computer Science School forms a new partnership with the U.S. Army. The partnership paved the way for DSU students to conduct research for the Army's Cyber Command. U.S. Senator Mike Brown says the agreement will set up students with a lucrative career in cybersecurity, jobs they can perform here in South Dakota. Find out how the partnership also benefits the military tonight on Kelloland News. Houston Speedway and Brandon is preparing for its biggest week of the racing season. The High Bank Nationals is a four-day event with $750,000 up for grabs, including a sprint car record quarter million dollars to win Saturday's A-Main. Tens of thousands of people will attend the High Bank Nationals and spend money at the local level. They're going to have to eat, they're going to have to sleep, and, and looking for places to stay and stuff like that. So it's, it's all going to, I think, impact our local community in a po very positive way. The High Bank Nationals kicks off Wednesday with the first of three nights of preliminary racing, followed by the finale on Saturday. Turning now to a first look at your midday forecast with meteorologist Adam Rutt. I was out at the track earlier today and it was getting quite warm even early in the morning, Adam. Yeah, it's going to be getting pretty hot in a hurry as we kick off this new week. And thankfully, this is about as hot as it gets. That's not to say we get a whole lot of improvement in the short term, but... We can try and find the silver lining to this. It's really going to be pretty hot today. Already near 90 as we take a look downtown. It's 88 at the airport with a south wind at 18 miles per hour. So yes, we have a breeze, but it's a southerly breeze. That's going to do nothing to help us out. It's going to be a warm wind across Kelo Land. So you might want to head over to the water if you can, like maybe the marina in Yankton, for example. Gorgeous view down there, by the way. 89 uh, south wind at 19 miles per hour. 86 right now in Brookings. We've already hit the 90s in Aberdeen and Pier at 91 apiece. 92 in Winter, and we're getting close in a couple of other locations. 88 now in Chamberlain as well as in Watertown. But there are locations that have not warmed up too much yet. Custer, Rapid City, and Buffalo still at the 70s, 72, 75, and 73, respectively. But the wind is going to be a bit of a factor if you are East River, 15 to 25 miles per hour out of the south. To the west, it's more light and variable. And then we have the dew point, which is in the 60s if you are East River. So unfortunately, not only is it going to be hot, it's also going to be a little humid as well. We have dew points in the 50s the farther west you go toward the hills and the Wyoming border by extension. At least we don't have anything to talk about on satellite and radar. Not yet, at least. That is going to change sooner rather than later, but also not for everybody. Today, though, it's either side of 90 toward Minnesota and northwestern Iowa and southeastern South Dakota. We're talking about mid to upper 90s. Meanwhile, up to the northeast, a similar spread, a 92 toward Canby and Minnesota, mid to upper 90s along and west of the interstate. And the further west you go, to an extent, the hotter it gets. Right around the century mark from Mobridge to Valentine even to where Philip as well. At best, we're talking about upper 80s spearfish to Belfouche and into Buffalo. We'll talk about the potential for some stronger thunderstorms on more than one occasion coming up in your extended forecast. Thank you, Adam. Many businesses in northeast Philadelphia are struggling after a holiday weekend because of the I-95 collapse and reconstruction. Even on Father's Day, businesses were practically empty after people canceled their reservations. But construction crews say they're making great progress on rebuilding the collapsed stretch of I-95. 
President Biden and Governor Josh Shapiro were out near the site before announcing a temporary fix. They're planning to build a bridge on top of the I-95 as a short-term solution, and hopefully some of the businesses can get back to normal. President Biden left his home in Delaware this morning to travel to California. While there, the president will deliver remarks in Palo Alto focused on climate change. He'll also visit a nature center and tour a coastal wetland. Following his remarks in the evening, the president is set to attend political fundraisers. At a boarding Air Force One, the president waved off shouted questions about China or whether he's spoken to U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Meanwhile, Blinken says the United States has no illusions about the challenges of managing its relationship with China. The comments followed Blinken's high-stakes meeting with China's president earlier today. Natalie Brand reports from the White House. Secretary of State Antony Blinken spent 30 minutes face-to-face -face with China's President Xi Jinping. The United States and China have an obligation to responsibly manage our High-stakes visit set up to cool tensions between the two countries. Progress is hard. It takes time. And it's not the product of one visit, one trip, one conversation. Um, my hope and expectation is uh, we will have better communications, better engagement going forward. While Secretary Blinken said they both agree on the need to stabilize the relationship, China did not agree to move forward with reestablishing military-to-military -military communications. I think that's an issue that we have to keep working on. Uh, it is very important that we restore those channels. The two sides agreed to continue to talk, but differences remain on key issues from trade to Taiwan. China's top diplomat says his country has no room to compromise or concede on Taiwan, emphasizing China opposes the Democratic Island's independence. China's sending a message, hey, we're in charge now, you're finished. To the, to the West and to the United States, and, and I think it's indicative of what they hope to achieve. Secretary Blinken says he expects his trip to Beijing to lead to additional diplomatic visits over the coming weeks. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, the White House. Blinken also emphasized areas of possible cooperation between the two nations in areas of mutual interest, including climate and public health. Americans across the country are observing the relatively new Juneteenth federal holiday with festivals, parades, cookouts, and other gatherings. On a long holiday weekend seen as many as a reason for a party, others are urging quiet reflection about the end of slavery and the treatment of black Americans throughout U.S. history. Many schools and federal buildings are also closed today to observe the holiday.